What's up, everybody? What's up? Today, I'm getting some stuff. I can't even talk, man. I can't even talk because I'm so damn tired still from all the work we did over the weekend. Today, I'm getting some stuff done. I'm getting this porch painted. Gonna get it done. It's gonna look great. It's gonna look great. Gonna paint it up. Gonna paint it up. Gonna paint it up. Now, no one's here to help me with the camera right now. The wife is running some errands and the kids are at school. So I'm gonna just show you what it looks like when I'm done, I guess. I'll show you me opening the paint. How about that? <laughs> All righty. I don't even know if I'm in frame. Paint. There we go. Here we go. Oh, there it is. There it is, guys. Yeah. Gotta stir it up. Ew, it's real thick. Wow, it's like hella, hella. Damn. Look at how thick it is. Wow. That's crazy. That is crazy, my dudes. Wow. All right. All right, guys. I'm gonna get started. <laughs> I'm excited, I can't wait. I'm gonna get started and I'll show you guys what it looks like when I am done. All right guys, I painted some of it. Now, I don't think we're gonna continue painting it this color because we're just not that happy with this color. But here it is, this is what it looks like. There it is. I mean, it's not too bad. It's not too bad, but I think I want to go a little darker. It's not bad. It's not bad. It looks okay, but I think I want to go a little bit darker. I'm not sure. I'm not sure yet. I'm going to chill. I'm going to see how I think about it. And then I'll take it from there. All right, guys. So I am leaving to go get Alex from school. Also, great news, the camera is ready. The camera is ready, it's fixed, ready to be picked up. So I'm gonna go get that right now. So guys, we are going in to Best Buy. We're going to Best Buy to get one. Why'd you do that? Cause I was got, trying to record in there. We're going, I mean not in Best Buy, the Toys R Us. And then we're gonna go to Best Buy to get the camera. And my shoes are untied. Alex. Some girl flipping out over there. Yeah, she's probably about light gray. <laughs> it's like totally some girl flipping out in the parking lot right somebody right now. <laughs> about a light gray shirt. We're going in, guys. <laughs> Recording, hold it steady. It's in this one. Oh, There's one left. Is that it? Dude, that's not it, is it? That's not it, right? Mm, it's hold you it's down a, that button. Don't do that. It's a VR. This is it says wireless Bluetooth gamepad for <laughs> your smartphone and VR headset. 
Oh. Okay, so does it connect to Apple though? How do you know if it'll connect? That's the problem. Works with all VR headsets and smartphones. So, it works with iPhone. Gosh, it's twenty damn dollars. So, and it on sale. Bluetooth. It says Android iOS. Look at that, Alex. That's how we're gonna get wins on Fortnite. Okay, guys, I'm gonna show you something. So much off for this. So much off. Dad, come look at this. Look. It's so much off. Look. 5% off was $300. $285. It's not bad, though. Well, it's not a bad deal. Look for the tablets. I mean, where do you want it to be? Free? These are at the pulp. Some stuff are. Ow. Why'd you fart? This is a Red Ranger helmet. That's so cool. I don't want to spend a hundred dollars on it though. Maybe if it was the White Ranger. The Green Ranger. This is gonna be cool to have. This is how we're gonna do Fortnite wins. Hey, Dad. <laughs> Roblox. Best game of 2018. I hope this is really gonna work. Toys R Us and Dad is mad. Yeah, because it's supposed to be 40% off, and I still paid the whole entire damn damn. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Now my wife's gonna yell at me. Oh, well, she get her free. So, we're about to go into the Best Buy to get the camera. The guy? What? Why is it blurry? There we go. Yeah, we're going to Best Buy to get the camera that you broke. Yeah. Okay, so right now, we're waiting for the camera. She's chilling, waiting. Seats are uncomfortable. Yeah. They're hard. They're waiting. All right, so we got the camera. It's fixed. A million dollars. Thanks to you. And now we're leaving going home. Yeah. <sighs> All right, guys, got the camera back. It looks great. It looks brand new. That there we go. Looks what the hell was that? It looks great. Looks shiny and brand new. All kinds of nice. No dents. No dents. Can't turn it on because there's no battery or nothing in there, but it's gonna be nice to be filming with this camera again, I'll tell you that. This camera's so worth it. It's really expensive. The whole reason I got it was because it was on sale. But now because you broke it, I pretty much ended up paying regular price plus interest. It's interesting. That means extra money. So yeah, that happened. So guys, we're on our way to the dentist and we're gonna get our teeth worked on and I'll pick up the camera whenever we get to the dentist. We're at the dentist and Alex just showed me his face 
and it looks like poison ivy. Don't itch it. That's why I slap it. Because that helps. Here, smile, Alex. We didn't even got to the good part. The dentist didn't come in yet. Mm mm. Was not dentist? No, he's the hygienist. The dentist comes and says if you got cavities or not. Are you videoing? Yes. Oh, dear. That's Alex's mouth. Passion. <laughs> you see it? It's your mouth. Stop touching stuff. Jake, I already have my Stop it. <laughs> Stop. Stop. Stop it. Stop. You, how old are you? How old are you? Are you five? Stop. Then stand right over here and be quiet. Safety first. So basically, I'm getting braces on every teeth. I'm gonna have a thing that wraps around my head. No, he's not. But he does have a referral for braces. And I have a cavity. He said you have yeah, three I'm cavities. Three. 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 For what? Three cavities is what you have. Three. I have zero. For what though? What do you mean for what? I don't know, for you not cleaning your teeth right. He said, you need to floss. Why you need to floss? You are really you gap in your teeth? This boy is gonna drive me crazy with his driving. I have no cavities. I'm good That's what you're just gonna keep saying? Mm -hmm. You're gonna keep saying you have no cavities. I have no cavities. <clears throat> I have none. Oh, look at that dog. Three cavities. Right there, with the blue. The top. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Staring right at me. <laughs> he's like, what are you recording me for? Oh, he's cute. <laughs> what happens when the boys have a six o'clock dentist appointment? We have to get pizza. I don't think they mind. Exactly. But okay, guys. So. You guys have been asking for more stories. All the time I'm getting messages for more stories. And I put a little poll on Twitch on what story I should tell next. And all of you guys voted for the story about when I stood up to a bully. So, here it goes. Here's the story of when I stood up to a bully. Okay, in this story... I was about five years old, had to be about five years old. I was going to this, um, it was kind of like a summer rec place. My parents would take me. It was an elementary school, but during the summer, it was a rec place. So and all the kids would go there and they would do all kinds of, uh, of activities, and dodgeball, arts and crafts, and, Stuff like it's kind of like a summer program, you could say. There's the rec center, you go there and do 
fun stuff when you're a kid. So my parents used to take me and my friend to that. And um, my friend was actually a friend of the family's kid. So he was also my friend by default. <laughs> but uh, so we were going to this thing and it was fun. It was real fun. I, I met all kinds of people and stuff. I, I was never really good at making friends when I was a kid. I was always really shy and quiet and to myself and, until I really got to know you. And um, so, you know, a lot of the time, at first, I kind of stayed to myself, but I loosened up a little and I met a few friends. And I remember there was this girl there that, <laughs> like the first girl I ever had a crush on, like that's, that's the time it happened. That's hilarious. Her name was Danielle. I'll never forget that. Uh, it's, it's just funny. Like, you're five years old and you got a crush. That, that's hilarious. That's hilarious for me. Now, looking back on it, that's really cute. It, it, it's funny. But, um, I was going to this place for a while. And then, all of a sudden, I started getting bullied. I started getting bullied a lot. And, um, uh, I started getting beat up a lot going there and for the longest time I, it just kept going on and then I told my parents I was like I don't want to go to this anymore I don't want to go there anymore I don't want to do this anymore but the thing is though I had to go there I had to go there because my parents had to work so instead of going to a babysitter I went to the rec center so I had to go there I had to do it um, there was this one time. This one time, man. I'll never forget this. Okay, so there's these bullies. So naturally, when I was a kid and there was these bullies around, I used to try to avoid them and stuff like that. So I would hide or I would just like make sure, try to make sure I wasn't around them. I, or I could get away easy. Well, there's a big field right next to the school and I like to climb trees and I like to go out into the field and stuff because there wasn't a lot of people there. I'm a bit of a lone wolf, so I used to go out in the field. All this stuff is still around. I could actually show you guys this one day. That what I'm about to tell you, the place is there and everything is still there. Um so one day I'm down there in the field and me and my friend are in the field and we're down by this picnic table. And there's a tree right by the picnic table. Well, out of nowhere, out of nowhere, here comes these two bullies, man. These two bullies. There wasn't nowhere to go. I wasn't going to outrun them or nothing. So I knew I could climb better than them. They were fat kids. So I climbed up in the tree. And they got me out the damn tree. They got me out the tree. And they started beating me up, and I yelled for my friend to help, and he just stood there and cried. He just stood there and cried, and then he just ran away, and he didn't even go get no help. And I just got beat up, so whatever. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, my friend just stopped going. Like, he didn't have to go to summer camp no more. And he didn't have to go to summer camp no more because of the bullies. Well, I did. And I told my parents I didn't want to go no more still, again. And they said to what I... I really have no choice. They can't. We can't afford a babysitter, which at the time we couldn't afford a babysitter, I guess. And I had to go. I had to go. And I, my parents would tell me that I just need to stand up to the bullies. I need to get brave, and I need to stand up to them. Or I need to tell a teacher or something. And you know what am I supposed? To, what was I supposed to do as a kid? Follow the damn teacher around the whole time? No, no. If anything, the girl I had a crush on, I followed her around the whole damn time. Well, well, like I said, uh, I used to follow the girl around all the time. So one time they caught up with me right there in front of the girl that I had a crush on when I was a little kid. And at this point, they don't beat me up so many times. I was just tired of it. I was just tired of it. And I knew that I was going to get beat up anyway. And I knew... I knew it was done. I knew I was done. I knew I was going to get beat up. And I was just like, I don't want to look like a sissy in front of this girl. So I'm standing here. 
and there's this field next to me, I mean this hill next to me, and on the hill is all these kids, and I got this bully in front of me, the hill has all these kids on it, and the girl I had a crush on was right there on the hill also, and I'm just standing there, and I'm like, I'm about to get beat up in front of the girl I like, I'm going to be so humiliated, and this kid, he just kept, and I was, the, as I was standing there, I was just getting madder and madder. And this kid, that this bully kept pushing me. And he kept calling me names. And he kept calling me a punk. Saying that I was weak. And saying that I wasn't going to do nothing. And, what are you going to cry? And he just kept pushing me. And I just stood there. Man, and I was just like, I had all this anger bottled up. And I just kept rem rem remembering what my parents told me. And that you got to defend yourself. And I remember my dad when he taught me how to punch somebody. <laughs> if I ever needed to punch somebody, my dad would taught me. So, this kid, he had no shirt on. He was bigger than me. He was, he was skinny, but he was bigger than me. And I was standing there, and, and he kept pushing me, and he kept pushing me, and I just squeezed my hand so hard, and then I just, I just swung. I swung, and I punched him as hard as I could possibly punch him, right in the stomach. Boom, just as, as, as hard as my little five-year-old self could possibly punch this kid. And everybody gasped. Everybody stood there and was watching. This kid that I punched, this bully, he was shocked that I fought back. He stood there and he looked at me and he had a tear in his eye and he looked like he was just ready to throw up. He looked like he was just ready to throw up. Like he, he was done. That punch was so good that he was done. He was done with that fight. I saw his stomach and he had my fist print right on his stomach. I'll never forget that, man. He literally had my fist right on his stomach. It was awesome. And that kid never bothered me again. Never, ever bothered me again the whole time I was there. And that was one of the two bullies. That was one of the two bullies that beat me up on uh, underneath that tree by the picnic table. That was one of them. So I took that guy out and I looked really good in front of the girl I had a crush with. I, I, like, that was a great day. I went home, I told my parents about everything. I felt great. I felt great, man. I was so proud of myself that I finally stood up to the bully. I felt like a million bucks. Well, then another time, another time, and then by this time I have confidence now because I got a win under my belt. This time, I'm waiting for it was either my mom or my dad to come pick me up. And I waited outside and I was sitting on the bike rack. I'm chilling on the bike rack and all of a sudden, man, all of a sudden, the trouble just knows where I am. The fat bully, the fat one, he comes up. He's by himself. He comes up. He's got this lunchbox. And I'm sitting on the bike rack and he keep, he's hitting me with it. He keeps teasing me and hitting me with a lunch bag box. Like, what you gonna do? What you gonna do? He called me names. I forget the names he was calling me. He was just picking on me. Just, and I was just sitting there and I was just taking it. And I was just taking it. I was telling him, you need to stop. You better stop. Just stop. Stop. I kept saying stop. I was getting upset and I was getting mad. And I felt that rage coming in me, man. I felt that rage coming in me. And he, he kept doing it. What are you going to do? You ain't going to do nothing. You ain't do nothing. And he got close enough to me and he, he did this and hit me with the lunchbox. And I stood up and I got right in his face. And he was like, what? You going to do something? And I nailed him right in his stomach hard as hell. <laughs> I nailed him hard as hell right in his stomach. Just gut punch. I put my body, like he was fat, so I knew I had to put some ass into that punch. I put my whole, like my whole body into that thing, like Bruce Lee punch. Boom! Took him out. Took him out. Had him ready to throw up. <laughs> had him ready to throw up. That kid never bothered me no damn more. Never bothered me no damn more. The whole rest of the time I was there, nobody bullied me. They knew I'd punch him in the stomach. <laughs> <laughs> no bother, no nobody ever bothered me no more going there. After that summer, I never went back there either. I, I give my parents hell 
They asked me if I wanted to go back to that. I said, hell no. Hell no. I didn't say that hell no at five years old, but I made a fuss and made it known I didn't want to go back. And as for the girl, nothing ever came of that. Nothing ever came of that. I don't I don't know I don't even know her last name. Like I was like five years old. I was five years old. Her name is Danielle and I followed her all over the <laughs> the rec center and stuff. And I remember I would get jealous over the boyfriend she had. I would get mad, I would give him dirty looks and stuff. <laughs> Five years old, man. But, um, yeah, guys, that's, uh, that's the story. When I stood up to the bullies, that's when I got to a fight, man. Five years old, getting into fights. Can you imagine that? But I took it. I took it as long as I could. I didn't want to fight. I did not want to fight. I didn't want to fight anyone. I even tried to, to become friends with these kids. I really did. Like, I tried to avoid them. I tried everything I could possibly do before I resulted in violence. And it's just like, it worked. It worked. But guys, for you guys, I am not telling you to go out there and, and pick a fight or something like that if you're being bullied. I'm not saying to do that or that. But bullies are a huge problem. They are a huge damn problem. All, I'll tell you now, most, uh, probably most of these major school incidents are because of this kid was an outcast or he was bullied. Bullies are a serious thing. And you know, schools don't even really do nothing about bullies. You might have to fill out a paperwork so there's a paper trail or whatever but their schools don't really do nothing about bullies they really they really honestly don't they really truthfully don't they might talk to the kid but their solutions and what they do and stuff like that never work out they never work out so sometimes when someone's hitting you and you're you're being you're being bullied sometimes you got to fight back I mean, some, sometimes the only option you have when you're being attacked is to defend yourself. And all the bullies I stood up to, after I defended myself, they never bothered me again. They never, ever bothered me again. Ever. I never even saw them again. They stayed the hell away from me. That, that was it. That was it for all them, guys. That was it. <laughs> so... So that's the story of when I stood up to the bully, guys. Guys, if you want to hear more stories of my childhood, that's not the only bully. That's not the only bully I came across in my life. I used to get bullied all the damn time when I was a kid. All the time. All the time. I've lost my fair share of fights, and I've won my fair share of fights. I mean, I have been in so many damn fights that I don't even... I don't even remember all the damn fights. It, it, I used to. I, remember, I went to one school one time where I got in a fight like almost every single day because that school was so bad. <laughs> that school's still around too, and I'm pretty sure it's still bad too. But yeah, man. If you guys want to hear more stories of my childhood, leave a like on this video. Keep your eye on my Twitter. I'll probably put another poll on there about one of what story I could tell next. And, uh, yeah. Keep an eye on all that, guys. I'm going to go ahead and end the video, though, because I'm tired. I'm still tired from this weekend. I can't, I'm still tired from all the stuff we did this weekend. I didn't even film all the stuff we did this weekend. But whatever, guys. Thank you all for watching. Check out the rest of our videos. If you want more stories of my childhood and stuff like that, leave a like on this video, guys. Leave a like on this video, and we'll make that happen. Thank you all so much. Good night. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Family 05.